It's a new day and we have a new Linux Mint that's packed with stunning improvements and changes throughout. Linux Mint 21.2 may be a minor update in the name but packs a major punch and brings many new things. An updated Cinnamon 5.8 is the highlight of this update as it's loaded with many cool new things this time around. New desktop customization options, a refresh software store and the list just goes on. There are many changes under the hood as well. Many security and performance enhancements take this power pack release to the next level. I did a fresh install of Linux Mint 21.2 as soon as it came out and I've been using it for everything. And now, I'm tempted to try it as my main distribution. You guys know I had recently switched to Debian 12 and Linux Mint is making me feel like dumping it. Will I switch to Mint though? We'll see how I feel at the end of this video. I'll make my decision then. For now, let's jump in and have a look at everything new in Linux Mint 21.2 Victoria. There's a lot of new things, so this video is going to be a fast-paced countdown or count up. Having a good knowledge of Linux commands and being comfortable using the terminal really broadens what you can do with Linux and what kind of experience you are going to get here. So if you're interested in leveling up your Linux game, definitely check out my course Linux Mastery Express, which is the fastest way to learn Linux and start using Linux like a pro. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical user interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the V editor and master shell scripting with real life examples. After teaching more than 100 students in person, I've curated this course with the top things that will level up your Linux skills the fastest. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux Mastery Express. We are running a massive 45% discount right now, so make use of it. The new Linux Mint features the latest and greatest Cinnamon desktop version 5.8. This new Cinnamon is the flashiest yet and has many aesthetic and functional improvements that will take your Linux Mint experience a step higher. Here, firstly the colors have been retouched to add a modern flair to the desktop. Cinnamon desktop has been going through that process where everything is being modernized. Just like GNOME went from 3 point series to 40 series with a massive visual overhaul, Cinnamon desktop 2 is making visual upgrades with every version. This time, colors are the highlight. The folder icons in the file manager now get dual colored icons and these bring about a subtle yet noticeable premiumness to the file manager. File manager is an integral part of any operating system and how good it looks matters. Linux Mint developers are going for those style points with this improvement. These icons change color based on the system colors. For most colors, the accent color will be a hinted white. But some colors here come in that combo. What is this, you might be asking. Linux Mint 21.2 brings a completely new and fun way of customizing your desktop. Introducing styles. The old way of theming the desktop was exhaustive but definitely overwhelming. Now a more manageable and hierarchical system takes over and I can say, this is much more digestible and fun to work with. First you choose the theme. The default Mint Y gives the best look in my opinion. The old theme is now named Mint L where L stands for legacy. Then you can choose between dark and light versions. Mixed gives the best look, but you have other options here. Then you can choose the colors you want. The palette gives you a good set of trendy colors to choose from and there are a few dual tone options as well. And if you prefer, you can use the old way of theming by clicking here. While I didn't have any problems with the old way of customizing, I really appreciate the new way. Great job here. The main menu here is now resizable. All you need to do is hover the mouse over to the edges and once you see the cursor change, click and drag to resize. Linux Mint's main menu is one of the best things about it. It organizes all the apps neatly and gives you an array of favorites for quick access. Then there's this fast search. This menu is the best way to launch apps. And now this is even more configurable. While I didn't think I needed this, now I see that this can be very useful when you have a screen that's bigger or smaller than normal screen sizes. Linux Mint now adds a nice touch of accent colors to the notifications and warnings elements. A sleek line in the contrasting accent color now strikes the top of these elements. I must say, this is a very nice touch. It's little things like these that make you feel that the developers are very passionate about a certain project. And aesthetically, things like these make Linux Mint feel like an expensive operating system. Now these notification element colors are taken from the color scheme that you have chosen for your system, so they are dynamic. Another area where Cinnamon 5.8 brings up premium reimagination is tooltips. When you hover the mouse over elements that give out a tooltip, you'll now see a sleek and trendy element that looks way more beautiful than the older tooltips. Again, these draw colors from your selected color scheme so they look very vivid against the bottom panel. 
Another desktop that has great tooltips is KDE Plasma. I absolutely love how tooltips look in Plasma. And I've never liked the older tooltips on Cinnamon. They were so bland. These newer ones look like they are inspired by KDE Plasma ones. I don't know whether they are, but it definitely feels that way. But one thing that I really liked is, the element of subtlety is there. They don't pop too much like in Plasma. In Plasma, the tooltips are made to make you go, whoa, a tooltip. The window control buttons, maximize, minimize and close are now realigned to look more acidic. The spacing and positioning has been very finely adjusted under a microscope to create more polished and refined look. I think there was a theme option given to change the window controls which I don't find now. Anyway, the controls look very crisp here so that's cool. Every new version of Linux Mint, major or minor, brings a set of new wallpapers. This time, we get a really cool collection. I particularly liked some snaps here. Some of these are amazing snaps. The color scheme, the cleanliness in some of these pictures make them look surreal. Cinnamon is a desktop that doesn't depend on a wallpaper like say Pantheon desktop does. Pretty much anything goes here. But the Mint team has made sure that you have a great selection of picks no matter what style you prefer. I love these. Top points. The software manager here gets a facelift and gets updated to 2023. Linux Mint software manager is one of my favorite software stores. It very neatly organizes all the software, has a very useful editor's choice section and everything is very clean and minimal. But the UI definitely needed a refresh as it was starting to look a tad bit dated. It's nice to see that the developers have not done too many changes but improved what could be improved. That's the Linux Mint philosophy, isn't it? Firstly, the featured app gets a bigger and more colorful banner. The margin and padding have been removed and this definitely stresses the featured app label. Looks better now. Then there's a new featured app section which now includes flat packs as well. While the software manager here has always supported flat packs, it did isolate them to their own section previously. Now they have been merged nicely. But we get notified of their flat hub origin by a little label. The application ratings also get displayed here itself. This is a nice touch and the scoring system has also been improved. The application category menu gets pushed below the featured apps and then we get some more top rated applications here. Moving to the application page, everything looks very neat here and when available, we get the option to choose between flat packs and full native .deb packages. When you switch this, all the information such as version numbers and the space needed to install these applications also gets updated immediately. Overall, I'm very happy with this refresh. The software manager is maintaining the same simplicity while giving us a better than before experience. Pix, the default image viewer and image browser of Linux Mint gets updated to version 3.0. This is a big update because Pix has now been rebased to GNOME's GTHUMB 3.12.2 and comes with an improved UI. Its performance has also been improved and it loads faster now. Support for AVIF, HEIF and JXL format has been introduced. GIF, RAW and TIFF images get improved support. Pix also brings a new set of image editing tools now. You won't need GIMP for little things. You can also customize the shortcuts and there's also a template editor and color profiles that you can check out. All in all, Pix 3.0 is a big update to this image viewer. Linux Mint 21.2 also brings support for XDG Portal. This brings way better compatibility between the desktop environment and non-native applications such as Flatpaks. Even the newer GTK4 apps integrate better with the desktop because of this XDG portal. Among other things, theming is one very important aspect covered by XDG. Light and dark modes are understood and respected by non-native apps using the XDG portal and all the apps, even those installed as Flatpaks, integrate really well now. This improvement is going to boost the user experience by providing a coherent and uniform application experience throughout the system. Linux Mint developers have made a big change in how icons are displayed, although it will be barely noticeable by users. With this addition, Linux Mint switches from traditional icons to symbolic icons. Unlike traditional icons, symbolic icons are designed to be dynamic and adaptable, changing their appearance based on the context. It's very subtle, but let's see these dynamic icons in action. See how the download icon here has dark color against a white background? Now if I select it, it changes color to a white against a blue background. This changing of color from black to white is the result of this new magic. It's very subtle but makes the entire business feel more premium. This new change also improves the theming. As you switch to the dark theme, you can see the icons light up. Symbolic icons adapt seamlessly to their background and match the color of the label, making the overall desktop look more polished and refined. I know it may look very small, but it's a great improvement nonetheless. 
Linux Mint 21.2 also brings exhaustive gesture support for window controls. You can use swipes, two, three and four finger swipes to perform various actions. You can even customize these. You can also use multiple finger pinches to set actions. I couldn't test out these settings, but yeah, in the productivity department, Linux Mint 21.2 is bringing a huge boost. See, gesture controls, especially those that are user customizable, can be extremely powerful. Multitasking, that is working with multiple apps open at the same time can get incredibly easier with these. Take the time, have a look at these and play with those settings to get the maximum out of Linux Mint. Warpinator, Linux Mint's exclusive file sharing utility gets a major boost with this version. SUSE security team audited the source code of this software and gave very important feedback regarding how to make Warpinator more secure. Based on that, the Mint team has closed some important vulnerabilities and patched it to make it more secure. One important change is, now Warpinator requires a group code to be set to be used. You'll have to create a unique code and set it on all your devices to use Warpinator. Your phone, other computers, tablets, they all need to have this same code to be able to share files. Simple and great security measure. Warpinator is also now completely isolated from your computer file system. Landlock and bubble wrap technologies are used here. So Warpinator is only capable of writing files to your download location henceforward. So yeah, it comes with way more robust security and the same old convenient file sharing experience. Mint's login screen receives numerous improvements. Firstly, now it allows users to choose from multiple keyboard layouts during the login process itself. This is especially useful for people who work with different languages or prefer different keyboard configurations. The login page displays an indicator in the top right corner of the login screen which when clicked opens a menu showing the available keyboard layouts. Users can easily switch between layouts according to their preferences. There's also a new password revealer. When logging in, if you feel like you need to double check your password, you can first click on the text box and then the revealer icon will be revealed, which when pressed reveals the password in characters. That's a lot of revealing. Moving on, now on your laptop, you can just tap on the text field here instead of having to physically press the touchpad. What are they going to invent next, huh? Xreader, the default document reader in Linux Mint gets updated and gets some additional improved functionality. The biggest thing here is, now Adobe Illustrator documents are natively open here. You won't need to install any additional plugins. Xreader also defaults to page mode when opening any document. Page mode displays the documents like how they look in print. The documents are also now open in a maximized window. Finally, finally, as someone who reads a lot of books on my PC, I can appreciate this simple yet thoughtful improvement. This is one book lover to all the document reader developers out there. We don't read books in small windows. Maximized always. Save us that one extra click. Along with all the updates that we already saw, there are many more updates. Pretty much all the packages get updated to healthy, well-tested version numbers. We get the Linux kernel 5.15. Not the latest, but very stable and reliable. Linux Mint 21.2 is still based on Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, so you have access to Ubuntu software repositories. You get very well tested and dependable packages here. You can go ahead and install these additional packages from the software store. That was exhaustive. Technically, Linux Mint 21.2 is a minor update, but it packs a major punch. Slow, well tested and iterative improvements. That's the path Linux Mint takes and it's working great for Linux Mint. Apple has a very similar philosophy and they seem to be doing okay too. See, every update doesn't have to be groundbreaking. It's not supposed to astonish and blow your mind. It's not a Marvel movie. In fact, it should be the exact opposite of that. Updates should be subtle. Updates should never break how the user uses his or her computer. Updates should be seamless and smoothly improve the user experience. And this update does exactly that. Linux Mint 21.2 Victoria is all about improving the Mint experience for everybody. This update also addresses a very important issue. With the release of GNOME 40 and later, Linux Mint was starting to feel like something old comparatively, kinda how Mate and XFC feel. And this is coming from somebody who has used Linux Mint for a long time, someone who has a lot of love for the green Minty operating system. But with the last few updates, Mint seems to have picked up especially in the looks department. And with this version, I'm officially over feeling that way. In fact, I've been contemplating switching to Linux Mint. I very recently switched to Debian 12 from Ubuntu. While everything is great with Debian, I seriously need a change in the desktop environment scenery. Ever since GNOME 40 dropped, it's always been GNOME this, GNOME that. I mean, they are doing a great job, but GNOME has never been my one true love. For a long time, that was Cinnamon and then Unity. Now, Linux Mint is making me feel like giving it a go again. 
and why not? It's got a modern N20 desktop. Thanks to a very well-tested kernel, it works great on my computer and there's just everything to love. I don't want to drag this video on. So yeah, I'll make the switch and soon I'll put out a video on everything there is to love about Linux Mint. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch that. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skill, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours. So definitely check that out. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, you'll absolutely love this fantastic distro called NixOS. It's pretty amazing, so don't miss that. Well, this is Linux Techs, signing out.